In the freewheeling, high heel teetering, velvet rope burning pre-2008 economic bust years of NYC, I was a straight up loser. I can't deny it. This town was lousy with rich people and the expensive clubs where they spent money. These clubs all had stupid one word names that I can't even remember at this point. Like, I don't know, Vain or Hush or Plush or Queef. <laughs> But they may, have been, may as well have been called shit for, for as far as I was concerned because never before has so much humiliation been packed into so few syllables. People were expected to pay 500 bucks for bottle service and the pleasure of being treated like an asshole. <laughs> Truth was, I wasn't cool enough, thin enough, famous enough, and as a freelance journalist, I sure as hell wasn't rich enough to enjoy that scene. But somehow, I managed to have friends who threw birthday parties at these places. I tried to fit in a couple times, but at a certain point, my thin wallet and fat thighs pretty much demanded that I make up some lies and uh, decline these invites. One year, my good pal Allison's birthday rolled around and I was flat broke. She's always been more successful than me and uh, I knew she had big plans. I lied in advance. Instead, I told her, hey, uh, why don't you meet me at, uh, at, the, at the Green Acre Park, you know, on your lunch break. She agreed, and I got there early to set up. I had big plans for this little park. Greenacre Park has a lovely waterfall that drowns out the sounds of the city and lots of little bistro tables and chairs. So I brought a little pink tablecloth, some pink flowers, two bottles of pink lemonade, two pink cupcakes, and little gifts wrapped in pink paper. When I arrived, other people were already on their lunch breaks. There was a construction worker munching on pizza, a few Midtown office employees, an old lady reading the New York Post, and they started watching as I started setting up. Soon there were questions. Who's it for? Oh, you having a party? So I explained that it was my friend Allison's birthday and, and suddenly there was an air of anticipation in the park. Now we were all waiting for Allison together, reading, chewing, watching the staircase for her arrival. It felt celebratory. But then the park manager descended upon the scene and the convivial vibe changed. He looked in my direction and barked out, no private parties, get rid of that stuff. It's not a party, I stammered. It's just two people, my friend Allison on her lunch break and me. No private parties, that's the rules, but no private parties. Crestfallen, I started to remove the flowers, the cupcakes, the bottles of pink lemonade. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw a construction worker stand up. With a folded piece of pizza in his hand, he bellowed, What's wrong with you? This girl is trying to do something nice for her friend Alice, and you gotta go and ruin it. <laughs> I felt like correcting him and saying that her name is actually Alison, Alison, but I kept quiet. Look, I don't make the rules, the park manager countered. From across the park, an old lady screeched, You're an asshole! <laughs> doing my job, said the park manager. But the construction worker was not backing down. With a gob of pizza in his cheek, he spat back, does this make you feel good, huh? Taking a shit on someone's birthday? So what, so, so somebody asks you how your day was, and you're gonna say, oh, yeah, oh, oh, it was great. I took a shit on someone's birthday today. <laughs> Jackass! The old lady chimed in. The debate raged on with raised voices and pointed fingers until unbelievably, the park manager finally said, Ugh, okay, you know what? Fine! You can keep everything except that pink tablecloth. This seemed to satisfy everyone, and by the time that Allison made her entrance, all was calm and the offending tablecloth had been removed. I jumped up to give her a hug as the whole park shouted out, Happy birthday, Alice! <laughs> I looked around and thought, finally, a clock where I belong. <laughs>